an institution that continues to fail us, that continues to train and cooperate with the fascist NYPD, the military, that continues to train IDF soldiers to carry out that same violence globally. Today, we're going to look at a controversial commencement speech put on by a student at CUNY, the City University of New York. Let's check it out. We joined this institution to be equipped with the necessary legal skills to protect our communities, to protect the organizers fighting endlessly day in and out with no accolades, no cameras, no votes, no PhD grants, working to lift the facade of legal neutrality and confront the systems of oppression that wreck violence on them. Systems of oppression created to feed an empire with a ravenous appetite for destruction and violence. Institutions created to intimidate, bully, and censor, and stifle the voices of those who resist. In this moment, in this moment of celebrating who we are, I want to celebrate CUNY Law as one of the few if not the only law school, to make a public statement defending the right of its students to organize and speak out against Israeli settler That this is the law school that passed and endorsed BDS on a student and faculty recognizing that absent a critical imperialism settler colonialism lens, our work and this school's mission statement is void of value. That as Israel continues to indiscriminately rain bullets and bombs on worshipers, murdering the old, the young, attacking even funerals and graveyards as it encourages lynch mobs to target Palestinian homes and businesses as it imprisons its children, as it continues its project of settler colonialism, expelling Palestinians from their homes. Pretty strong condemnation of Israel here really digging into the, the BDS movement, uh, the boycott, divestment, and sanction movement against Israel um, that many students adhere to with the, the goal of encouraging Israel to um, be better on human rights issues regarding the Palestinians. And this speech is core political expression protected by the First Amendment. We're talking about criticism of a foreign government, a foreign nation, and that is very much speech that is the core of what the First Amendment protects. And there are calls um, by many on and off the CUNY campuses to punish the student, to punish the university for having this convention speech, and that would be a violation of the First Amendment, which again, protects the right of students like this to condemn Israel and have these political statements regarding capitalism and other public issues. Carrying the ongoing Nakba, that our, silent is no, that our silence is no longer acceptable. We are the student body and faculty that fought back when investor-focused admin attempted to cross the BDS picket line, saying loud and clear that Palestine can no longer be the exception to our pursuit of justice, that our morality will not be purchased by investors. And we did all of this in spite of the racism, in spite of the selective activism, the self-serving interests of CUNY Central, an institution that continues to fail us, that continues to train and cooperate with the fascist NYPD, the military, that continues to train IDF soldiers to carry out that same violence globally. You gotta love a student who, during her commencement speech, criticizes and condemns the university giving her this platform. Uh, she also condemns the, uh, the military, the police calling them fascists. Again, political speech protected by the First Amendment. It's not always easy to speak out against these powerful institutions, but the First Amendment gives us the ability to speak truth to power, to challenge the status quo, and to um, do what many people in other nations around the world can't do, which is criticize police, military, their government, and their institutions. A larger institution committed to its donors, not to its students. Let us remember that Gaza just this week has been bombed with the world watching. That daily brown and black men are being murdered by the state at Rikers. That there are Palestinian political prisoners like HLF in U.S. prisons. That there are refugees at the southern border still locked up. That yesterday marked one year since the murder of U.S. journalist Shirin Abu Akleh, and that the murder of black men like Jordan Neely by a white man on, a, on the MTA is dignified by politicians like Eric Adams and Senator Chuck Schumer. So we got the MTA, Metropolitan Transportation Authority, we got Rikers Prison, notoriously 
um, in New York. A lot of abuse happens there, and she's using her her platform to condemn these injustices and even implicating politicians like Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, and Senator Chuck Schumer, also of New York, who uh, she alleges are complicit or at least knowledgeable of these injustices. And this is a quintessential example of political speech meriting the highest level of personal protection. She is fully within her power and within her right to criticize these public men and public measures. And this speech, although it may be vitriolic and controversial, is fully protected by the First Amendment. Uh, CUNY students and the university itself is within its power to, within their power to say these things and to allow the students to have these platforms to speak out against injustice.